So we're going to get into the troubleshooting section of the presentation. This is going to be important, um, not only for operational issues, but actual error codes as well, and what you might see on the, on the drive. All right, so the first symptom that we see. Motor doesn't move, motor's drawing high current. We've all seen that. Troubleshooting, how do you, how do you troubleshoot that? What do you guys usually do in the field? Check the brake first, excellent, okay? Make sure the brake is picking. Uh, if your brake is not picking, obviously you're not gonna move, but uh, any changes that you make in the drive aren't gonna have any impact um, if the brake's not picking. All right, anybody else? What else do we look at? Say your brake is picking, that looks good. Where do we go next? Parameters, Parameters. which ones? Okay, so checking different parameters, particularly the motor data, uh, that needs to be uh, set correctly. Um, all right, motor data looks good. What do we do next? Voltage, voltage. make sure we have incoming um, AC voltage, okay. Encoder. Going to the encoder next, yes. Um, making sure that the uh, encoder is communicating. If we have an NDAT encoder, uh, making sure that one, we've done the encoder learn for a permanent magnet motor. Uh, and making sure that the position of the encoder is correct as well. Okay, so yes, we, we, um, we're troubleshooting, we're going in the right, right direction here. A um, Couple of other things that, that we can look at. Uh, number one, command speed. Are we actually getting a speed from the controller? Okay, um, sometimes you, know, you go to run and um, you're not gonna move, but in this case, we're not drawing any current either. We don't have a command speed. Uh, so the, the home screen, you'll be able to, to tell on there. Um, command speed would just remain at zero. All right, so we're getting a command speed. Uh, encoder issues. Uh, what are some common problems with encoders that you guys have seen? Well, loose wire connections. Loose wire connections, that's, that is one. Um, pulse number, that needs to be entered in correctly to the drive, yep. Uh, so a, f a few notes. Um, on encoder issues. Uh, obviously, depending upon which type of encoder you have is, is gonna dictate how you, how you troubleshoot it. Um, one, one note on uh, the, the TTL incremental encoders for induction geared machines. Uh, the biggest thing there, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're wired up correctly uh, to the actual terminal strip on the, on the drive. And number two is that uh, you have a voltage differential between your, your channel pairs, uh, between your A and B channels. Uh, if you do not have that differential, uh, you, one, you should have an error that pops up, but uh, you're not gonna be able to, to run in closed loop operation. As far as the, the NDAT encoders go, uh, for, for the permanent magnet applications, uh, we do actually have a parameter that you can look at to, to see if the encoder is communicating with the drive uh, since the the encoder does communicate back and forth uh, via serial uh, connection. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later as well, but that is something to, to keep in mind. With um, the, the TTL uh, induction application, you have the option to run the drive in open loop. So wh whenever you have an induction machine, uh, one of the, the most useful and, and easiest uh, troubleshooting steps you can take is put the drive in open loop and see if your, your symptoms are still there. Mm -hmm. So in the example of you're not moving or you're drawing high current uh, in closed loop, put the drive into open loop volts hertz mode. Run the car, um, see what your current is doing. If your current goes low and uh, you run normal, um, that means that there's something in the feedback loop uh, that, that's causing, causing uh, you, you not to move or, or to draw high current. Uh, whether that be actual feedback from the encoder or something in the motor model itself. Um, at least it can kind of give you a clue that, hey, it's feedback related. Um, if you put it into open loop and you still can't move, you're still drawing high current, uh, that likely indicates that there's something external uh, to the drive that, that's causing your issues. So it could be that your brake uh, is not picking. It could also be that your motor is wired up incorrectly. Um, Seen it uh, multiple times where the motor is a dual voltage motor and it was wired uh, incorrectly. 
and that would reflect itself in open loop operation. You're not going to be able to move, you're going to draw a high current, might make some noise. So um, again, this option is only available for induction machines. You can't put a permanent magnet uh, motor into to open loop operation to run. Uh, it will not function correctly, you won't move. So uh, during open loop, you will be able to see feedback from the encoder on your diagnostic screens, but that feedback is not being used by the drive. So at least you can see if your encoder is providing feedback back. All right, motor data. Um, so this is uh, another thing that uh, needs to be checked, and it's very critical uh, in order to, to run properly. Uh, I'll, I'll focus on the, the induction uh, motor data first. Most common is going to be a, a 1200 uh, RPM six pole motor and um, that, that's what the, the nameplate might say for motor RPM is, is 1200. Uh, however, as far as entering the, the motor data into the drive, we don't recommend that you put in the synchronous speed. Uh, we actually recommend that you put in the, the slip speed. Um, some motor manufacturers on their nameplate will provide that for you. Um, usually it's dictated as a, a full load RPM. Um, it might just be another, another value right next to the 1200 RPM. But um, we do recommend putting in the slip speed. And uh, if you are not given a slip speed, you can say roughly 3% less than what your synchronous speed is. So for a 1200 uh, RPM motor, you can put in 1165, 1170, that's acceptable. As far as permanent magnet motors go, um, they are a little bit more involved um, just because the motor data uh, is sometimes scaled. So depending upon the application, some motor manufacturers will scale uh, the RPM uh, accordingly. If they've got a larger motor that they wish to, to run at a slower speed, um, they, they will scale that RPM. They will change it. Uh, this practice is acceptable. It is, it's fine, but it needs to be done correctly. And a lot of times we see that it's just not done correctly. Um, where you might see this is where you get a, a sheet that says application data, and that differs from your actual motor nameplate data. So um, the, the big thing with, with permanent magnet motor data is we need to keep the number of motor poles constant. Uh, whether you are running um, 200 foot per minute, 100 foot per minute, if that data has been scaled, the number of motor poles is going to remain the same between the two. That, we didn't change that. Another note on motor poles is that it needs to be an even number. Uh, we can't have 21, can't have uh, 47 motor poles. It's impossible. Uh, so the number of motor poles needs to remain even. And uh, you know, a quick, quick check is what you can do is just take your frequency, multiply it by 120, and divide by the motor RPM to see if the uh, um, scaling was done, done correctly. I do have a few examples later on in the presentation that, that goes through how to, how to scale this, how to do that. Mechanical issues, uh, again, this is one of the first things that we, we should look at uh, right away uh, just to make sure that, hey, you know, is our brake picking? Um, is there any obstructions in the hoist way? We're not um, up on the safety or anything like that. Um, those are just some, some kind of first, first things to do just to make sure that, um, you know, that the adjustments that we're going to make in the drive are, are, are going to make a difference. All right, so the next problem, motor noise. This might come as like a, a high frequency uh, buzz or, or a, a growl. Does anybody have experience with this? What, what have you guys done to, to troubleshoot that? What have you changed? The carrier frequency. On the actual, on the drive itself? Yeah. What, have you, what did you change it to? I think we, we just had them where we work it up and down a little bit until the noise went away. Okay, okay. Gain settings, okay. Anybody else? Okay, so there's a few things that, that we can look at for motor noise. <coughs> uh, again, switching frequency. S switching frequency. Um, most of the time, we, we recommend not, not playing with that. I had no motors. Okay, well, <laughs> that's. <laughs> Enough said. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, yeah, there, there's a few things that, uh, that you can change actually in the, in the, in the drive. Um, first thing is if you have an induction motor, is put, put it in open loop and see if the noise goes away. Um, if the noise goes away, okay, again, that's in the, it's in the feedback loop, so you're going to need to make some drive adjustments. The noise is still there during open loop. There's something uh, external to the drive that's, that's causing this, whether it be in the motor itself. Um, I've also seen it that uh, depending upon where the brake module is mounted on the motor, um, actually the noise is coming from the brake module. So it is one thing to, to make sure that we know the noise is coming from the motor itself and not, not the brake module. If you put it into open loop and it goes away, or if you have a permanent magnet motor and you're looking at parameters to change, the first parameter that to, to, to change would be the encoder sample rate. Um, that's going to be under encoder data in LEO4. Um, this is going to be, um, or excuse me, LEO5. Um, this, is, this is one thing that um, it, it's going to make, make a difference. It's just going to change the rate at which the, the encoder is uh, taking a sample. Um, four milliseconds is the default. Eight milliseconds is going to be a, a suggested value to try. Usually increasing it makes it better. Um, in some applications, decreasing it will. But um, for the most part, increasing uh, the, the encoder sample rate will take care of that noise. There's no harm in, in increasing the sample rate. Um, if you go past eight milliseconds, however, though, uh, I actually will expect you not to, to run very smooth. You actually might introduce more noise, uh, and that's due to the encoder just isn't sampling fast enough. Um, especially for the permanent magnet motors, we need that high, higher resolution. We need to take more samples. Um, so four or eight milliseconds usually work. Uh, so that's, that's the first parameter that we, we recommend. Um, one other note, LEO5 is the encoder um, resolution number. Um, that's going to be uh, set to 8 as a default for NDAT applications, set to 2 default for TTL. Uh, if that, for some reason, is set to, to a different value, that could also cause, cause noise. But um, that's, if you select a, a permanent magnet configuration, that should automatically be set. Or an induction configuration, we shouldn't have to change that. All right, another potential cause, uh, the gains. Uh, how many people here, have, have, if, if you started up a motor or you had experience starting up a motor with, um, without the ropes on the shift? You've just spun the motor, you have up front. Um, did you have to make some gain adjustments at all? Did it run? Usually after you usually just do all your gain up front. Okay. Uh, sometimes where most often the, the gains are the issue is where, especially on a, on a smaller motor, uh, we'll, we'll see it up front here when we, when we do the demonstration, but um, on smaller motors, if you're just starting up, you've done your auto-tune, if you've got a permanent magnet motor, you've done your encoder, learn, and uh, you just want to spin the shiv, but there's no load on it, uh, and you, you have a, a, a loud growling, a vibration, high-pitched hum, you might have to adjust your, your gains. Um, we see this in, in unloaded applications a lot. Your, the default gain settings are just too high. Um, so the quick thing to do is to just uh, lower the KP, the proportional gain. That should be uh, enough to, to take care of the issue or at least improve it for the time being. Uh, quick thing to do, cut it in half. Um, you know, go in large values. Default is going to be 3,000. Go to 1,500. Does it make the problem better? Uh, is there no change? At least that will kind of give you an idea of the changes that you're making if, it, if it's going to help, help you there. Um, so that is something to, to look at. Uh, if, if you can also adjust the, the KI gains as well, uh, the integral gains, you might have to lower those a little bit too. Um, but for the most part, the proportional should take care of it. <laughs>